Welcome back to NBA Cinema. So today we got to talk about Draymond Green and Steph Curry and also Steve Curry. Now Steve Curry gave his thoughts on Draymond and the whole situation. And he also spoke on Steph Curry being questioned. And the biggest question that has arisen over the last few days, and even before that, right, you know, when Draymond became unhinged, more and more unhinged, um, they like, where's Steph Curry? You know, can Steph Curry have that tough conversation with Draymond? Is he kind of afraid that Draymond may get like that with him? What is his deal? And that that's just been the questions people been asking. So now um, we get a chance to hear what Steve Kerr had to say, how he feels about the way the league is handling this. As you all know, Draymond Green is suspended indefinitely from the Golden State Warriors. And you have, um, you know, the, the team isn't, doing that all that well i said the other day you know they need to look at moving some of these guys around but mike dunleavy today came out and said they're committed to draymond which you would have to whether they are going to move them or not you have to remain committed to your asset because you don't want to say anything that could make your trade asset not look valuable you know so and maybe they are really committed to them but i'm just saying that's what he said and steve kirk kind of went off about steph curry's leadership being questioned let's check out what he had to say i understand that steph curry is not a vocal leader if this were lebron james if this was a teammate of lebron james we'd be all over lebron james where's the leadership where's he at what kind of impact is he having i don't think that we should be holding steph curry to lesser standards there is a way to lead you don't have to do it the way somebody else would do it but you got to do it i saw jordan Poole walked by Draymond Green last year. You know who I saw following him off the court to the bench? Steph. None of us knew about it. They didn't talk about it in the postgame. But you saw Steph roll up on Jordan Poole and address him and was in his face and was talking to him because he was being disrespectful to Draymond Green during, during the game. Like, focus. Get your mind right. Don't be doing stuff like that. I'm saying you don't have to do it the same way. But Steph Curry and his leadership, yeah, he's required to have some. And he's required to display some. And Draymond Green loves that brother and owes a lot to him. And maybe, and Draymond Green told me personally when, when, when he hit Jordan Poole, he said, man, the look on Steph Curry's face, it was almost like Steph Curry thought it was his fault because, like, he should have done something. He should have seen that something wasn't right and should have done more. Draymond said that about Steph. And that's how Steph, he felt, felt like Steph was feeling guilty. I'm saying there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot to this, and Steph is not being blamed, just like I'm not quote unquote blaming Steve Kerr or whatever. But there is no doubt that organizationally, especially when it comes to the coach and when it comes to the star player, that there appears to be that more should have been done. For anybody to question Steph Curry's leadership, um, it's, it's actually um, kind of sickening to me. You know, and I saw some of that yesterday. It was disgusting. I'm talking about one of the finest human beings that I have ever been around. And uh, but that's the climate that we live in. And and these guys, um, it's part of part of all of this is just um, the climate we live in, and and the the arrows that are you know slung at these guys, and the uh, the judgment, the criticism. Um, that's fine, um, but it's part of it, and it's not easy. We're all human beings, and um, so that's that's a big part of the job these days of, as a professional athlete. You have to deal with with everything, and you have to accept it. Um, but there are times when you kind of have to say, "Really? Like that's the angle you're going to take? You're going to question Steph Curry's leadership? Like really? We're going to do that? Think about that. Think about." That. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I think the uh, suspension makes sense. Um, you know, to me, this is uh, about more than basketball. It's, um, uh, it's about helping Draymond. I think it's an opportunity for Draymond uh, to step away and um, to make a change um, in, in his approach, in his life. Um, and that's not an easy thing to do. That's not something you say, okay, we're going to do five games. And then he's going to be fine, right? Um, the league did that in five games after the incident with uh, Rudy. Um, that's not the answer to, to pick a number. The answer is to, to help 
Draymond. It'd give him the help he needs, give him an opportunity to make a change that will not only help him, help our team, um, but help him for the rest of his life. This is not just about, you know, an outburst on the court. Um, this is about his life. This is about um, someone who I believe in, someone who I have known for a decade, who I love for his loyalty, uh, his uh, commitment, his passion, uh, his love for his, his teammates, his friends, his family. We're trying to help that guy um, because the one who, uh, you know, grabbed Rudy, choked Rudy, the one who took a, a wild flail at, at uh, Yusuf, uh, the one who punched Jordan last year. Um, that's, that's the guy who has to change. And he knows that. Um, everything before that, over a decade of play, wh what are we really talking about, right? We're talking about, you know, getting ejected for yelling at the ref or throwing a ball. But you look at the past year and what's happened. It's clear he, he needs the opportunity to change, and that's what an indefinite suspension gives him the opportunity for. Zach, here's the thing. Draymond Green has lost the respect of his peers, not just in the organization. We heard what Nurkic had to say about him, right? We saw Kevin Durant comments last night after the game. And when you think about who Draymond Green was before all this start happened, he was one of the OGs around the league. But let me go back to all the people that are speaking out, right? We heard from Nurkic, Kevin Durant, and we just heard from Mike Dunley. I really don't care about him from either one of those guys. Damn it, where's Steve Kerr? Steve Kerr, he voices his opinion about everything else, and he voices it loudly for everyone to hear. But when it comes down to Draymond Green and these actions, it seems like he shies away from the moment. And this is not the time for him to shy away from the moment. I want to hear Steve Kerr today to, to come out and make a statement and say, Draymond was wrong. This would not be tolerated. As long as I'm the head coach here, it's a certain standard that we're going to have to do. Yeah. And Draymond is going to have to show us and come back and make sure that he's locked in and I won't tolerate this. I want to hear from Steve Kerr. So for me, I feel like Draymond needs some time away from the game to be able to reflect and see if he really wants to play basketball anymore, man, because some of his actions have been over the top. And again, it seems like he's mostly targeting certain people. Now, you can look back at the finals, him and uh, Jalen Brown got tangled up in everything, but he didn't swing on them. You know, they just got tangled up. That was physical basketball, but um the choking, the grabbing, and, and I seen a report that they come out say he didn't realize he held Rudy Gobert that long, which I don't know if he thinks that makes him look better or what, but when you say you don't realize that you held him that long, they could interpret that as you looking like a psychopath. You know what I'm saying? Like, you you didn't know you did that, so that's even scarier than if you knew you did sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just saying how the league could look at it different ways, so I think right now he just needs to kind of be quiet and do the work that they will require of him to do to get back on the court. And that's why they couldn't put no games on it because they have to put him through, um, you know, they have to put him through a series of things to see if he's ready. Now, at the end of the day, are these things really going to matter if Draymond doesn't want to change? No. But they have to at least appear to take measures. But ultimately it's going to, uh, come down to Draymond Green making a change, man. He He's going to have to put his team first. Now, as far as Steve Kerr talking about Steph Curry's um, leadership, a lot of people have wondered what would happen uh, when Steph needs to step up and have the voice. I don't know if he does. I'm not in that locker room. But Draymond always being the loudest voice was a concern to me. I will say that because your best player – should be able to have the final word sometimes. You know, obviously you got people like Kawhi Leonard, different players like that. Um, but they said even as quiet as Kawhi is, he'll go to, like, people behind the scenes and tell them what he don't like. So, so Steph, I'm wondering, does he ever get demonstrative and come at Draymond Green in a very aggressive way? way with his tone to let him know he means business and leaving it open to go wherever he wants to go 
uh, with it because that a team leader is going to have that trait at some point. So I think that's what people want to see from him, him or Clay, you know, over the years. Clay could have been able to say something, but it seems like Draymond always has the loudest voice. And if you look at all the other greats, you know, when you start talking about the great, great players, um, you know, you had Magic, you had Jordan, you got LeBron even. They're going to have the loudest voice at different times in the game. So your voice has to hold the most weight on the team. And does Draymond's voice hold the most weight within the Warriors locker room or Steph Curry's? And I'm talking about as it – pertains to galvanizing the players around the team. Now, if we just talking about, you know, I don't want this guy here, he got to be shipped, then, yeah, Steph has the biggest voice. I'm just talking about uh, within, you know, the player circle, does Steph have the biggest voice? And I think that's what people are alluding to. But I need to know what you guys think in the comment section about this. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Till next time, peace.